Hey there, board gamers. Justin Our Paint here, and we're back with another unboxing. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an, another unboxing here and we're going to be tackling the last of the box sets that I own and that is going to be the Battletech beginner box. Now just like with the Battletech a Game of Armor combat box, this one here was donated to me from Dave Al Sager, Al Sager, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, from our Discord community, the Death Ray Designs one specifically, and uh, he wanted me to dedicate this to his buddy, Benjamin Starkley, who passed away. Uh, he wanted the contents of uh, his collection to go towards helping getting people uh, into Battletech and kind of running demos for um, uh, their local shop and things like that. And with COVID, he wasn't able to do so. So he donated those to me to allow me to do some videos and I'll paint these up and use these for my local shop for demos when it's applicable. Uh, and they hail from the Northwest Indiana gaming community. So a big shout out to Dave and uh, hopefully I do your buddy justice and we get to uh, turn his former collection into uh, something good, something that'll uh, be somewhat positive in his name and uh, allow him to carry on through others. So uh, today we're going to be checking out the beginner box, as I said, and like I've said with the other two unboxings, um, save your box lids if you, if you can. Um, they're really good for toting around minis. I know that seems like a really silly thing, but uh, it, believe me, if you start doing batches and big things and you want to tote them around and not have to put them back in a transport every time, this is really good when you're working on minis. Now, uh, it, as well, or on top of that, if you're uh, wanting to store this like a board game, having the box lids is, uh, is very important. So uh, with that said, let's jump right into it here. Uh, just like with the other ones, we've got uh, a little bit of literature here to get you uh give you something a little taste of battletech i think this might be the same one that came in a game of armor combat let's go ahead and pop that open and just check real quick uh nope they're different so very cool uh so you're gonna get three uh different little stories because you got one in each box the clan invasion game of armor combat and beginners um box so we got that and then we have these nifty little things um i don't know if we showed those i thought I feel like Game of Armor Combat usually comes with these. Maybe my box didn't have them. We'll get into that, though, and show you these. Um, we've also got the standard dice that normally come with stuff. We've got unit cards. Of course, we got the mechs, and we've got the uh, rule books and stuff there. So we're going to start with the things underneath this, and we'll work our way up to the top. Move that out of the way here. So we've got our quick start rules. Now this is not going to be as in depth as the Game Armor Combat rules, but this is going to be enough to get you going. And if you're playing this as like a board game, uh, specifically with classic Battletech in mind, this will be just enough uh, to get you through. You don't have to get into all the crazy advanced stuff. This is enough to treat it like a little small board game. Just like with the Game Armor Combat, which has the rules for, for um, uh, kind of introduction to classic as well, probably more depth because it's a bigger book. Um, you can treat both like a board game. Now, the caveat is this box only comes with two miniatures, so there's not much that you can actually do with that other than doing a quick demo. Um, I highly recommend picking this up alongside a game of armor, armor, Armored Combat. You don't need this to go alongside Clan Invasion, but I do think buying Clan Invasion with a game of Armored Combat and this in tow is not a bad idea. But if you're choosing between the two, you only want to get one box. Um, I would recommend either Clan Invasion or Game of Armor Combat plus this. And the reason I say that is this is the only way to get the Griffin. And uh, usually you can get it for about 15 bucks online. MSRP is at 20. Um, when things aren't inflated right now, it's crazy. As of filming this, some of the prices are really, really high. Uh, it's because supply and demand is a problem because these are out of stock. But uh, that said, you can typically pick these up uh, online. Games work, or not Games Workshop. <laughs> um, you can pick them up at Miniature Market, probably Noble Knight, um, Fortress Games and Miniatures, Ares Games, and uh, of course Amazon. So um, keep on the lookout for the $15 mark. When you're looking at metal mechs that usually cost between 10 and 15 bucks on average, getting a box for 15 that comes with two plastics is pretty good. Just the plastics alone, that's about $7.50 each at the $15 mark, 10 bucks each at the $20 mark for full retail. And you can usually sell mechs for five to 10 bucks a piece online. So that makes this a pretty good value, even if you're only doing it for the mech, specifically for that Griffin, it's the only way to get it. We'll get more into that later because the Griffin's a little bit of an oddity uh, in the way that they did it. So um, got a short little uh, intro guide here to the Inner Sphere. Uh, not quite as in depth as the other manuals that you get in the other books that are multiple pages. This one's really light and probably because this is the beginner box, they don't want to overload you with information. So you get a little bit about a little bit to get you going. Uh, again, I think most people are probably buying this to go alongside the uh, Game Armor Combat. Um, typically the boxes come with this insert and um, these coupon codes are not exclusive. Um, oh man, I thought the coupon codes were good through 
2021, I guess not. Well, they used to run a deal where uh, your coupon codes uh, were good. Um, I thought they were through 2021, but you could get really good values on the metals. So unfortunately this is out of date. So, uh, but that was a good thing at the time. Now you also get um, less on this. I believe the other ones were full sheets. Uh, we can check that too. I've got the box here, why not? Um, do a little compare and contrast here with the Game Armor Combat. Um, I think that it's got a bigger uh, set of um, cardboard pieces. Let's see, yeah. So you get more with the Game Romer Combat. Um, it appears to be about twice as big as the uh, beginner box uh, set of cardboard standees and uh, terrain modifiers that you get. So we'll get into those. So uh, the cool thing about this, if you're uh, picking this up alongside Game Armor Combat, you do get more standees that you can use with your, um, your Game Armor Combat if you need more uh, NPCs or things to attack, or you just want to proxy with these cardboard things because you don't have physicals for multiple units, you and your buddies, um, uh, your family, you can play more than, or multiple lances and change it up and use these in lieu of minis until you get some. I also get these these cardboard uh, terrain modifiers here. Now, I've mentioned this in every video. These are a little abstract. You have to remember what they do, in particular when, uh, and these look like all like trees. We'll get to the map. We'll talk about that. Uh, in particular, when you get to these game mats, maps, where um, you get the, actually, this one's going to make a liar out of me, won't it? I'm going to laugh if there's no uh, height. There is no height. So, um, if you've watched the other videos, there is elevation in those maps where you've got the uh, up and down uh, verticality on a flat surface. This one does not have that, and the uh, little cardboard standees here don't supply that either. It's just more trees for both sides of your map here. So you don't have to worry about that, which again is probably that way for a reason so that this isn't overly complicated uh, in the beginner phase of things when you're learning classic. Um, only having to worry about ranges, hex movement, and then light cover and, and heavy cover, things of that nature, really simplifies it so you don't have to worry about line of sight and elevation, uh, elevation and how it impacts your movement and your targets. So that's pretty good. Um, that's actually a pretty clever thing to do because the... Um, the abstract nature of the elevation or the verticality with the uh, the gameplay area with hexes is really difficult to wrap your head around and for me it's very hard. I'm so used to playing with 3D stuff so this is a little abstract for me. But for beginners that's actually pretty good because you only have to worry about standard hex movement and trees. Uh, and for learning purposes that is pretty sweet. Now. You also got in here, and again, I don't know if these, I had these in my Game Armor Combat box. Uh, I'm pretty sure they typically do come in that. Um, they might have been missing, but that's okay. Um, you typically get these, and these are pretty nice for teaching you classic. Um, they're pretty slick, so you could probably use dry erase on it if you're worried. I would laminate them. Some of them um, have information on the back about your mechs. And you got your standard sheet here, uh, and I believe this is really simplified, so you're not having to worry about um, your uh, armor and structure, it's just got your life on there. Uh, if you're playing classic, you would have um, the um, record sheets, like we saw in Game Armor Combat, the paper ones that'll have armor and then structure under it, so you're keeping track of both. But again, this is uh, relatively simplified, and I think this is kind of the way to go, if I'm honest. Um, so that you've got uh, something really easy um, to digest because uh, basic uh, or classic battle tech can be a lot. So this is actually pretty nice. Um, I wonder if this might have been a primer for what they've done with MechWarrior Destiny, their roleplay uh, light rules, where they've got something similar, their rule set for combat and that if you use it instead of uh, other combat options, um, it's something in between off strike and in between classic, which kind of resembles this a little bit. Um, but it's nice that it's got the modifiers and stuff on there for you, which is pretty cool. And you'll notice that these uh, this mirrors the mechs that come in a Game Armor Combat. So um, again, I think this normally comes in a Game Armor Combat. If it doesn't, um, that, that's just another incentive to pick up the beginner's box here. So you get all of this stuff. So. These are pretty, oh yeah, so uh, I thought this was the case. I remember this. Uh, these are really cool because some of these have uh, a print on the back. And if you're into that kind of thing, like that's pretty dope artwork, right? You can totally get like a little small frame or um, a couple of, or a frame that has a couple of slots for photos. And you could totally use these to decorate your hobby gaming area, right? So very cool. This is the least cool one. Uh, who cares about the lyrans? I'm just kidding. Someone probably does. So those are pretty neat. Um, I'm not gonna worry about putting those back in here because they're just gonna get moved around anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and box that part back up here and we'll work our way up like I said we would. And we'll take a look at this stuff. Now, these right here, 
Fun fact, Game Robin Combat has these premium dice that are always guaranteed to roll 12s. I'm just kidding, that's not actually true. But if it was true, well, what if it was? What if these are those dice? These are the elusive dice. I'm gonna put these on eBay, 100 bucks right now. Guaranteed to never roll what you want except when they roll what you want. I'm just joking. Sometimes I say dumb stuff because I try and be funny. Um, but they do come with dice. <laughs> you will probably need way more than that. Um, it's nice it comes in there for you and your friends but uh, when you play, but uh, most people that play Alpha Strike in particular are going to be rolling um, more than two dice, or two pairs of dice, or excuse me, more than one pair of dice rather. Uh, and then if you're doing classic, if you're doing speed rolling when you're rolling different weapons, some people will have like a pair of white dice, you know, in this case I got some Kelhound dice on my desk, and they'll pair off and they'll just be like, okay, my white dice are, are you know, this weapon, my red dice are this weapon, and then they'll just grab a handful and roll, and then slide them all to the side and calculate what the totals were, and then look at what weapons were what colors for speed rolling that's a little complicated but if you know you know what weapon is what color and you're consistent that can speed it up so keep that in mind now we've got some cards here as well so we've got um, we don't have these mechs in here uh, but we'll get a zoom in here if you want to check out the cards you're free to pause and actually you know what let's let's grab that game armor combat box again uh, I didn't realize I was going to be doing so much comparing. Let's actually see if these pilot cards are different than the Game Armor Combat one. If so, that's actually something worth noting here. So, got the box open again. And let's grab... Let's go find the Locust. Alright, so this, this is actually really neat. This is the Game Armor Combat Locust. You get Kim Yaro and Luna Tekinaka, right? And then in the Game Armor Combat, you get Devin Kone, 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 and Zin, or Zin Zhang, if I said it right. So that's actually cool. By getting this box, you're actually getting, you're getting Locust cards, even though you already have um, Locust from the other box, but they're different pilots. So that's really cool. Um, let's see if it's the same way with the Griffin, because they gave you a Griffin card here, but didn't give you um, the pilot. So we get Hafa Kaur, Kaur. Yep, they are definitely different. And that one's Black Widow Company, and this one is uh, House Corita. I totally thought that was Kelhound for a second. Um, so you get this guy from House of Davian, and this guy from uh, the Black Widow Company, Wolf's Dragoons. Very cool. So I'm going to assume these are different here. Um, and just for uh, simplicity's sake, we will go ahead and uh, I'll grab, let's see, we need the Thunderbolts, and we need the Wolverine. So we get Delmar Clay in the Game Armor Combat and Anton the Rock Karl Karlovesky, Karlovesky. And then in the uh, beginner's box, we get uh, Maxim Kuznetsov. If I said it right, I probably butchered that name. And then Eric Stindall, Hanson's Rough Riders. I thought that was a Dark Age. I thought the Rough Riders were Dark Age. Maybe, um, hmm, interesting. And then we got, from the Game Armor Combat, we got Lutgard Wintar and Simon Becker, Beckner. So we already reviewed those, but just to show them again. And then we got Emeka Kalu, Kalu and Gia Yawin. Very cool. Uh, now you'll notice we've gone through the pilot cards there's no Alpha Strike cards. That's one thing that um, I don't like, that you didn't get another uh, set of Alpha Strike cards with this. They saw fit to put the Griffin in a Game of Armor Combat, which we've already reviewed. I'll, I'll hold it up here and show you again. Uh, this is the card that comes with Game of Armor Combat. You don't get an Alpha Strike card with the beginner box, which I think is a bit of a mistake because you get all these other resources, right? And, um, you know, the game or uh, Alpha Strike is kind of a really easy intro to the game or to the universe. And then they saw fit to not give us uh, uh, more cards here. Uh, in particular, if you're playing Alpha Strike, um, you're going to have, uh, and you bought both of these boxes, now you're going to have two Wolverines and a Griffin, but you only got the one Wolverine card uh, for Alpha Strike. Now, you could print some for Master Unit List, but I think it's a mistake that they weren't included, included in this box. If you buy it with the intentions of playing Alpha Strike and trying to do it as a board game without having to go online and print stuff, be aware that uh, these cards don't come in this box. You would have to get a Game Armor Combat to have the cards to use both of these mechs. That said, um, this is the only way to get the Griffin. 
um, and if you do get both boxes you'll have a duplicate here and that you'll have two wolverines um, this uh, if you if you watched my game Rummer combat unboxing you'll know this was my least favorite uh, miniature from that box um, as the wolverine and so we you know you'll have two of them if you get both boxes i think it would have been cool if both mechs in this were different from a game Rummer combat so you didn't have any duplicates i'm not sure why they did that um, but it is what it is so be aware if you get this you'll have two and then the man, the myth, the legend, the man of the hour here, we've got the Griffin. I like some of the metal ones a little bit better, but this isn't bad for plastic and it's a pretty iconic mech. Uh, that said, uh, the Griffin's really good. I own several of them and I play them in most of my factions, um, at least my Inner Sphere stuff and my Mercs, because it's a Griffin. It's iconic and it functions really, really well on the tabletop. Um, and miniature wise for the price like i think this is I think it's pretty good i don't think uh i don't think you can go wrong picking up these new plastics at the price points that they are even if there's some mold lines and stuff you got to clean it's still a hell of a lot cheaper than uh, the competition out there if you're looking at like games workshop stuff in particular this is way cheaper now uh, even cheaper than things like legion and infinity 2 in the grand scheme of things so not too bad but that said that's uh That'll do it for the uh, beginner's box here. Not too much to it, just enough to wet the palette a little bit. Um, if you were looking to pick up a box, I would not recommend this on its own. I highly recommend you picking up a Game of Armor Combat to go along with this. Um, I think you'll be a little disappointed if you don't do that. Um, you just get so many more resources in the Game Armor Combat. For three times the price, you get four times as many mechs, basically. Two mechs for 20 at full retail, or eight mechs for 60 at full retail. And usually you get this for 15, and you usually get a Game Armor Combat for between 45 and 50 online, discounted. Um, so be aware of that, uh, and hopefully you can make a, uh, a solid um, choice if you're looking to invest in getting into Battletech. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, check out other videos on the channel here, because I'm going to be talking about more alpha strike stuff that's what i do i don't have a lot of people here who do classic um and it's very complicated and when i go to play i don't have a lot of time um and classic takes a while alpha strike's pretty speedy so picking these up uh, to get into alpha strike you could pick up the uh, game armor combat for retailing at msrp 60 and get your battle or beginner box at 20 so you're looking at 80 and if you pick up the clan, clan invasion box i think it's 50 so you're looking at 130 uh, and then if you wanted to pick up the uh alpha strike box or not box um book i think that retails for 40 so for less than 200 dollars at full msrp if that's what you did um you would have uh, 15 mechs and two elementals, uh, and that is enough. If you never bought another thing, that's enough to be playing a variety of scenarios and games and just having fun with your friends. But because this stuff is so cheap, uh, when the boxes become available, you can pick up those force packs from the Kickstarter. Uh, for 20 bucks, you usually get four mechs. For 25, you get the Lance or the Stars with five mechs. For 30, you get the Comstar with six. It's five dollars a mech, basically. So it's really, uh, really easy to uh, um, expand your forces once those become available um, in, in the mass market. Right now, with the pandemic and stuff and uh, Kickstarter fulfillment, that can be a little difficult. But when you find them, that's an easy way to expand your forces. So that being said, folks, I hope you enjoyed. I hope if you are new here that you will hit that like and subscribe button and hopefully get into Battletech and check it out yourself. If you're a veteran, if you already know about Battletech, welcome to the channel. Thank you for tuning in and letting me ramble with you for just a little bit. This is as much about reaching you guys and, and enjoying the Battletech lore and fluff in the community with you as it is about getting someone new and for me to have uh, a little bit of hobby therapy. I get to get on here, ramble about something I like and hopefully connect with you. If you enjoyed this content, again, hit that like and subscribe button. If you uh, happen to follow me on Instagram or uh, see any of the mechs here on the channel that I've painted, check out the link below for Monument Hobbies. Got a, a referral link and a coupon code. 99% of the paints I use are from their Pro Acro line. If you're looking for anything and everything Battletech, check out Fortress Miniatures and Games, a sponsor of our channel here. Robert Ash is a local. He runs Fortress. He's super awesome and supporting him supports me in so far that it keeps a door, the doors open at a shop that does Battletech, which is great for me. If he doesn't have something and you need it, send him a message. You might be able to find it for you. And finally, if you're looking for uh, expanding your forces with something other than official models, some proxies, check out deathrodesigns.com. Coupon and link down below. That's where I work for my day job and we've got some really cool 6 to 10 mil scale minis as well as terrain that works for 6 to 10 mil as well as 140k and Infinity, uh, War Machine, Hordes, and anything in between, especially D&D &D and stuff as well. we got some fancy terrain. Uh, and if you want to support Death Ray Designs, that helps support me too because it keeps me employed. So that being said, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. As always, keep rolling those dice, keep painting your models, and I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.